So if you're interested in real estate investing, you need to be able to analyze deals very quickly. And this is the video. This is the video that takes the last four videos in my valuation series, brings it all together into one video that kind of shows you how to do this quickly and effectively to be able to get the right value as fast as you can so you can move on, look at as many deals as you can and find that right deal that's going to work for your next real estate investment. So let's get going. All right, so if you haven't seen my last four videos on determining value for properties, you may want to go check those out. Some of this stuff may or may not make sense. But uh, just as an overview, the first two videos talked about my background and appraisals in general. Uh, the third video was about how to evaluate the subject property area and external obsolescence, things outside the area that could affect the value of the property, so the general area and being geographically competent in those areas. The fourth video was about the subject property, what to look for, what kind of things can affect value. First thing that we wanted to talk about when it comes to comparable properties. So we, we know all about the subject property, all the things we need to look for, and all of those things that I went through on the fourth video are also going to apply to your comparables that you look at to determine the value for your subject property. So I came up with an easy way to remember this five-step process, and it's nowhere on the internet because I just made it up. It's fresh, I promise. Number zero, become geographically competent in the area you invest. Number one, you wanna have access to the data. Number two, you're gonna wanna look at the property in two dimensions. Number three, you're gonna wanna look at the property in three dimensions. Number four, you're gonna to wanna to look at the property in four dimensions. And number five, we're gonna zero everything out and analyze everything. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure we collect the data. We've either gotten information from the MLS, if it's listed online, or if it's a wholesaler, you've got the information from the wholesaler, or you've inspected the property and you're dealing directly with the seller. So the first thing is to gather the information. And you wanna make sure you have all your sources. Where are you gonna find your tax information? Where are you gonna find your square footage? You wanna have all this done beforehand. Here are the things that you're gonna to wanna to look for. You wanna make sure that the property has been permitted or not. You're gonna to wanna to look at the effective age versus the actual age of the property. You're gonna look at features and amenities. You're gonna look at quality and condition. You're gonna look at the sales data. You're gonna look at the zoning, and you're gonna look at the current use. All those things, you wanna make sure you have that data available when you start your valuation process. So collecting the data. You wanna have at your fingertips and know ahead of time where you can at least access this information. For me, I always have these open at any given time. I've always got the assessor's page open so I can quickly check the stats on that. I've got the MLS open so I can check square footage and things like that. And there's, there's plenty of sources for these things. You just wanna have them ready at your fingertips so you can do this quickly. So that is all encompassed in having the data accessible. Once you've got all that ready, you're ready to start evaluating properties. And the first thing you're going to look for is you're gonna look at the property in 2D. And what do I mean by that? We're looking at the property in two dimensions, on paper, on the computer, what are we looking at? We're looking at things like the square footage of the house and verifying that that's correct. We're looking at the function of the house. Is the floor plan set up in a way that's functional or is there something weird? You have to go through a bathroom to get to a bedroom. How many bedrooms and bathrooms? What is the condition of the house overall? And what is the parking situation? Carport, garage, slab, or no parking at all. We're gonna look at the size of the lot. We're gonna look at legal access. We're gonna look at the proximity to anything in the surrounding area, like next to a park or next to a railroad track or a highway. Now that's the first step, but don't get overwhelmed. This may sound like it takes a lot of time, but once you get experienced at it, you can do it in 30 seconds to a minute or two as you just are com comfortable with where to look for this info. So that's looking at the property in two dimensions. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the property in three dimensions. And what do I mean by that? We're looking at, at from a side view, what does the property look like? Is this a one-story house or is it a two-story house? A split-level house or a house with a basement? So if you're taking a cross-section of that house, we're looking at it in 3D now. We're looking at is the elevation of the lot, is it level, is it sloped? Is there any kind of cliff on the property or anything dangerous? We're also looking for things like ceiling height. Is there an abnormally low ceiling? Like anything below eight feet is going to be abnormal. Or is there 12 foot ceilings? And that's something you're gonna to wanna to note. Are there fantastic views or is it down in a gully in a hole? Another thing when we're looking at the side view elevation is, is it in a floodplain or not? So that kind of summarizes what you can do to look at a property in three dimensions. Now again, that sounds like a lot of stuff, but once you get good at this, you can do that in a matter of seconds just by analyzing the, the data. So you're gonna be doing each one of these steps for the subject property, also for the neighborhood and the comparable properties that you're finding. Okay, now we're gonna look at the property in four dimensions. What is the actual age versus the effective age? And also when we're thinking about the fourth dimension, we're also thinking about time. How long did it take for each one of these comparables to sell? How quickly are you looking to sell your subject property? Because whenever somebody asks me what their property's worth, I have to ask them how quickly do you wanna sell it? 
If you want to sell your house in 24 hours, there's a price for that. If you want to sell your house in six months, there's a price for that as well. And they're not the same. So we want to look at the subject property. How quickly do we want to sell it? And we want to look at our comparable properties. How long did they take to sell? And the last step of the process is to zero everything out. We're going to analyze the data. We're going to analyze the data of the subject and we're going to compare it to the comparables. And we're going to make adjustments for things like pools and garages. And we're going to reconcile that all together and come up with a number. The more you buy properties and rehab them, you're going to start to be able to identify from the photos how much things are going to cost based on those photos. And you're going to be able to identify within the photos what things are just being covered up and what things are real issues. Now that we've gone over the whole process, I'm going to give you some tips to help you do this faster. And the more you do this, the faster you're going to get. So if you really want to be able to do this fast, now as I'm analyzing deals, it takes me about 30 seconds to look at a deal to know if I want it or not. And then if I identify certain key metrics, I'm gonna move on to a deeper valuation. I'm gonna spend five minutes on it and don't look a little deeper. If that continues to look good, I'm probably gonna spend 15 to 30 minutes on a property doing a really deep dive before I go ahead and make an offer and buy the property. But that's with the wholesaler. With properties on the MLS, where it's more of a traditional 30-day buying structure, I may go ahead and make the offer based on my five-minute evaluation and not even bother with it until we get something accepted and we're in the inspection period. And lastly, if I'm dealing with a seller, I'm probably gonna spend a little bit more time because I wanna be, I wanna have my strongest, best offer right out the gate. So a couple things to make this faster. If you're in Arizona or California or Texas where they have these big old sprawling neighborhoods, a lot of the communities that have built in the last 10, 15 years, they're built in PUD uh, project unit development areas or they, the neighborhoods are set up in a standard zoning. And so you don't have a lot of differentiating factors between the houses. They're all pretty much what we call cookie cutters. And so that's, that's the appraiser's utopia. That's an investor's utopia to come in here and to be able to have 100 houses in the same neighborhood that are basically exactly the same. It's very easy to do values on those type of properties versus if we're in New York or, or, or Vermont or somewhere like that where it's a more established state with older homes you've got you know a lot of factors to factor in when in, when those types of and those are a lot harder than appraising or valuing a property in one of these subdivisions so one of the things you can do to make this faster is just identify really quickly is this in a project unit development or some kind of master plan community and if that's the case you can just choose comparables within that same area and you can be relatively rest assured that a lot of these things on this checklist kind of fall away like the zoning and the easements and the covenants and restrictions they're all going to be fairly similar another thing not to get too hung up on is the repairs don't get in don't get too bogged down on the minutia of the, every little detail and every repair i guess what i'm saying is don't get too hung up on the unknowns because if you buy a property right a lot of things can go wrong and you can still make money and in the seller's market like it is currently you can just talk yourself right out of a deal because you start to think about all the possible things that could go wrong. So on a future video, I'm actually going to go through this and I'm actually gonna show you in real time how I do this and how quickly it can be done. But to review the process, this is the skill you want to take away. The first thing we're gonna do before we even start the process, is we're gonna become geographically competent in this area. We're gonna to wanna to know all those factors that are gonna affect our house or the resellability. Number one, we're gonna to wanna to collect the data. Number two, we're going to want to look at the property in two dimensions. Number three, we're going to want to look at the property in three dimensions. Number four, we're going to want to look at the property in four dimensions. And number five, we're going to want to zero it all out. We're going to, want to analyze, make our adjustments, and come up with that number. So maybe it's just yourself investing or maybe you have a team, but if you're the person that's responsible for coming up with that valuation, that's a big, big responsibility. So I would suggest that you go back to my playlist. If you haven't watched them, maybe re-review them time and time again to brush up, but that should walk you through all the things you need to know to evaluate a property. The videos one through five. And if you review those and you practice this, you can be better than 90% of investors that don't understand this. In my opinion, this is the most important tool you can have as a real estate investor. So I would suggest sharing this video with anyone you know, whether it's a real estate agent or somebody on your team that needs to get better at evaluating properties. Send them this video, send them the link to the playlist and if you have any questions on this, please comment down below. Please like this if you like these type of videos. This is more of a meat and potatoes type video. And if you like this type of in-depth discussion on the intricacies of real estate investing, please give it a like down below so I know that uh, I should continue with this type of content in the future. So good luck on your next real estate investment and good luck on getting that valuation right.